All right, everybody. It's the Working Fans Comedy Cast, and it's uh, Dave versus AJ, a debate we've done on the Working Fans Podcast for a long time. Um, today, we're going to try a little something different. We're going to debate uh, two of our favorite comedians. Uh, for me, it's uh, Eddie Murphy, guy I grew up watching, loved his work, and appreciate it. And for AJ, guy, some of you might not be as familiar with. <laughs> He's a bit of a throwback. My dad loved him. I wanted to sway your votes here. But AJ's got a couple a lot of good points why you would like him, I believe. Uh, Don Rickles. AJ. Tell us about uh, Don, baby. You go first, because I think right. there's a lot to talk about here. Well, it's going to be interesting, because um, you're talking about a long career that started in the 1950s and lasted all the way to 2016, compared to a um, shorter stint where somebody did become a huge movie star also in Eddie mm -hmm. Murphy. Um, I have the utmost respect for both of them. I think our audience, however, is not going to be as up to date or as much knowledge. Hopefully this is something that will lead them to go and check out Don Rickles. Mm -hmm. um, Don Rickles is one of your original insult, insult comics. He goes out there and it's not him telling jokes per se where he's telling stories. Eddie Murphy's more of a classic comic where he comes out and tells stories. Mm -hmm. um, there's punchlines. There's points to where he's going. Don Rickles comes out and does what as comedians we call crowd work where he's literally looking for who he sees. Mm -hmm. And now with some comedians, this will, and he, I'm sure he did this too, there will be plants in the audience where you, no different than a wrestling mm -hmm. event, mm -hmm. you want to plant people in the audience so that you can start, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and that starts the rhythm going, and then you, then you go from there to the rest of the audience, and it makes it easier to um, find a rhythm. Yeah, good on him for doing that. I mean, uh, that makes a lot of sense, and it's Super challenging to do that too, uh, that aspect of comedy because obviously it is you don't know it's the X factor you don't know what you're going to run into with that crowd so uh, yeah well, I respect that and, I, and that's not to say that other people may not be able to do that but he obviously Rickles was from a different time period and um, you know there now, are my dad always used to call him a great insult comic my dad was a Don Rickles fan I'm not saying that even in this case to make light it's something I was always uh, I heard I want to ask though. Um, well, are I'm there other insult comedians from that era? Well, th there were. It was much more common in that area because you had more club comedians. Okay. So you got to remember, he started in the 1950s when TV was just starting. So you didn't have um, the outlets that you have now. Now, that being said, he's got stuff in common with Eddie Murphy. He was on shows like the Dick Van Dyke show, freaking, um, he had his own TV shows. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in movies like Clint Eastwood movies and stuff like that. So he had similar things to Eddie Murphy in the yeah. sense that he had similar vehicles. But the difference is, is you didn't have, like, when Eddie Murphy was starting, you had HBO with spotlight comedians. Mm -hmm. In order to be a spotlight as a comedian back then, you had to go on Ed Sullivan, Milton Berle. Um, stuff of that nature where he became famous believe it or not was johnny carson johnny carson always took credit for discovering don rickles because he would always bring him on to his late night show and he would insult johnny insult the crowd insult whoever was there and then he became even bigger insulting people on the d martin celebrity roasts he would come on and made for good television exactly and he would insult all of your favorite people people like jimmy stewart um, people like Frank Sinatra, Dean himself, um, all the stars from that day. And then he also traveled with the Rat Pack, which I'm sure, I don't know if the audience is going to be too familiar with the Rat Pack, but Dino, Frank Sinatra, um, Sammy Davis, Sammy Davis Jr. Jr. And similar to Eddie Murphy, he would say things that were not politically correct. He would joke about the things that you wouldn't normally joke around with people. And I don't know I'm if glad you touched do on that, that today. I, right. I, I, you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. Like I was going to say, for people who think, oh, um, Murphy was more of like, you know, making fun of like races and stuff like that in his comedy. <laughs> you haven't watched Don Rickles. <laughs> like Don made fun of your race, your religion. It was a different time period. And, and it was and a white that, dude doing it too, folks. Well, <laughs> well now, now that being said, he was like a lot of the comics that were in that time period. He had, he's Jewish. So he yeah. had a little bit of a different background growing up. Um, obviously sure. seeing the anti-Semitism, stuff like that. And his way of dealing with stuff was by doing comedy to point out to people how absurd it was. 
Mm-hmm. So he would literally just call somebody like he would be talking to a white guy in the middle. He'd be like, listen, you wa- listen, you freaking um, uh, WAP cracker. or something like that, <laughs> cracker, whatever the popular time period, the time period slang was, and he would pick on anybody for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, but the thing is, he was fair. He picked on everyone. If you're gonna be an insult comic, you cannot only pick on one race. That makes you a racist. Right. <laughs> you have to literally pick on everyone. <laughs> right. And and some of the greats have learned. Dave Chappelle does that too, I think, with his show and stuff too. And even actually Murphy does that in some of his acts too. You'll see him make well, some the, of well, the funny Asians. thing. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is if you talk to a lot of the comics who are popular today, a lot of them have worked with Don Rickles because he last he did he passed away in 2017. Mm-hmm. And he performed right up until the end. He would be at Foxwoods regularly, he would be at and he worked with a lot of today's comedians, would open up for them, would learn from them. And a lot of them list him as one of the people that they learned to do crowd work from. Yeah. What a wealth of knowledge that must be, too. Um, I'll say this, because uh, you're very well read on this. And uh, I know you've read books about Don Rickles, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I met Don Rickles at Foxwoods. Oh, you did? <laughs> it, I, I only I only had a two second meeting with him. Mm-hmm. It, it was in an elevator. We're going from um, the high roller lounge down to the bottom floor, and I'm in the elevator, and I'm with a um, uh, manager who I was working with. I was bartending at the time. I'm with the manager that I was working with that night, and he was a big guy, maybe about six three, bald head, um, pretty ugly dude. <laughs> and um, well, I have to say that because if I don't say that, this story is not going to make sense. Okay. So Don Rickles, who's maybe about five foot six, five foot seven, is there, and he's there with the security person who's walking with him. And he looks at me, looks at the other guy, looks back at me, and goes, Ugh. "Yeah," literally just gives me a look and goes, "Ugh," like what the hell is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. So, so even off stage, he's still making it lighter, more. Yeah. And, and this was two thousand and eight, so he had to be like seventy something years old already. All right. So funny little. That's interesting. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, this is not really much of a debate. I think we're just gonna have a little fun with this. Um, obviously, they're two from different time periods. I'll tell you about some of my fandom with Eddie Murphy. Uh, oh, I talked about this uh, in a maybe a previous episode. Maybe it was off the record. I don't remember. But one of the things I loved about Murphy was the content that he was talking about as a child. I probably didn't get all of this. And yes, I was listening to Murphy as a child, folks. <laughs> However, because we, he we was all so, were. because he was so good. With his timing, his facials, the impressions, he could still communicate, and you you got you got it. It was funny, you know. It was funnier when you watch it years later, and that was one of the great things. Even though politically correctness, it doesn't probably mm-hmm. hold up. Humor wise, it still holds up to me. I mean, the first one, I, I, the second bit I ever saw was uh, Raw. Well, that was the first. That was the first I saw, but that was actually his second act. So it was years before I saw Delirious, which is his first one. And to give you an idea, I mean, we'll put Murphy over it a little bit, too. The only thing you need to know is he took a word like Goonie Google, something he just made up, and it becomes hilarious. He yeah. tells this whole story about, I want to say, his dad talking to, uh, you know, one of the his brothers who brought over, like, uh, you know, his wife, and she was a big, hairy bitch, and she would fall down and wreck his stairs. And he came to the conclusion when he was drunk that she was a Bigfoot. Because she would say Goonie Google, and he was like, "This is not possible. You brought a Bigfoot in my home." He's like, "Don't bring a Bigfoot in my home. She's not trained well. She can't walk a flight of stairs. She'll climb the fuck out of a tree." I bet, which you would never again. A lot of this stuff is just so outrageous, and the timing is so. Uh, it, it's a different world, then, folks. And I mean, but again, his facials, his impressions—they're so good. And I think a lot of this stuff still holds up today. Okay, so I'm going to tell you where I first saw him because I did not first see his stand-up. That was not what I saw first. Oh. What, right. what I saw first was the Saturday Night Live. Yes. And his, the social commentaries that he did. He did, and they were funny, don't get me wrong, but yeah. there was social commentary behind him. Like he did Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. Yes. Which showed us the difference between, um, what is it, Mr. Roberts? or what's Mr. The Rogers. One? Rogers, there you go. Sorry, I never yeah. watched that crap. Um, <laughs> so, Shit out of people's childhoods here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck people's childhood. Um, <laughs> so, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, it showed us the difference between what those little white kids were going through in that neighborhood mm-hmm. and what it was like in um, where Eddie Murphy might have grown up in the ghetto or something of that nature. 
yeah. and showing a tenement building and the difference. And those are just some of my favorite skits because he's like, all right, today we got to be really quiet because <laughs> the landlord does not need to know that we are here. Right. <laughs> and, is, and, yeah. and he climbs in through the window rather than using the front door to avoid the uh, – uh, he comes up through the fire escape. Then he does stuff like um, Gumby. Mm -hmm. He does. Um, you talk about the Rick James impersonation that Dave Chappelle does right. uh, later on. That's all got to become off the original freaking impersonation of um, the Godfather of Soul, James Brown. Oh, James Brown. And, and, uh, and in Murphy did, getting in the hot tub. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, no. Too hot. Too hot. <laughs> and, uh, and then he did uh, Buckwheat Sings the Hits. Oh yeah, looking, uh, looking for love, love. Yeah, looking yeah. for love and all the. So he he did social commentary to show us through humor how absurd some of the stereotypes were, um, the differences in living environments, and he continued to do it in his comedy when he did Delirious, when he did Raw, and I think that that's what made Eddie Murphy and everybody in that time period. Our parents always were like, "Oh, I don't like him. All he does is cuss." <laughs> well, 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 that wasn't all he did. Right. He, he, he was trying to show us the absurdity. No different than like Carol O'Connor in the bunk, in the, in the, um, the mm -hmm. Archie Bunker with freaking all in the family. Somebody has to show the absurdity of some of the stereotypes. First interview uh, I did on here with a comedian, Nathan Wallace, and we came to the conclusion too. It was interesting. Um, yes, being a clean comedian can be difficult. But also being a dirty comedian prevents different challenges because everybody swears. So if you're going to swear in your act, you need to be particularly good. You need to have a particularly good act to stand out because everybody's already swearing. So that's not a hook. You know what I mean? You can go anywhere and see people swear. So to be really, truly that, you know, it's another it's a different art, basically. Yes, being a clean comedian is very hard. What Bill Cosby did. And I'm not talking about Bill Cosby, the rapist. I, <laughs> I don't know that guy. But the comedian, um, Bill Cosby, what he did was super challenging. But it's equally hard to do what Pryor, Carlin, and Murphy and some of those guys did too because they had to be even better. They had to be on their game because a lot of people were trying to do this. I think that um, what you talked about there is very important. Um, by the time Eddie Murphy came out, there was a lot more comics that were swearing in their acts it wasn't like the 1960s where you could actually get arrested for swearing in your act and mm. that it was um considered extremely taboo to actually do that did red um, fox get arrested one time red for that? red fox got arrested for it he wasn't the only one no. um one of the things that one of the people that was uh, most famous originally for um doing it was freaking why am i going blank on his name um, he ended up dying young too. I'm supposed to be on a tribute show for him coming up. Oh, and I'm, uh, smoked the cigarettes and stuff like that too. Right? Yes, uh, and I'm going freaking blank, and I hate that I'm going blank on it. That's uh, I. Well, gosh. why don't you look that up real quick? Comedian yeah, that smoked cigarettes. But, but but it doesn't matter. My point is is that by the time Eddie Murphy actually came around, yeah. it was commonplace with Richard Pryor, George Carlin, sure. and. George Carlin had already done the seven words that you can't say. Right. Uh, right. Um, everybody knows it. And being a, a comic, when you swear, it's got to mean something. Right. If you just come out there and every other word is F this, F that, cuss, 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 that's not funny. But when mm -hmm. you punctuate your story with well-placed curses, sure. it, it can actually accent what you're doing. And he makes fun of that in his bit in Raw, where he talked about that people from other countries would come in and not understand and only pick up the swear words. So they would go up to him and be like, Eddie Murphy, suck my dick. And you know, essentially, he's making fun of himself, and he's making fun of the act that some people didn't quite get, that there was like jokes in this. Like He couldn't just go out and be like, fuck you, suck my dick, and that was an act. Yeah, and, and that was the interpretation that some people had. And even Bill Cosby, he talked about what a hypocrite Bill Cosby was early in his comedy. Yes. And how Bill Cosby called him up and cussed him out because yeah. of him doing the um, all the swearing they did and the swearings and stuff like that. And then Richard Pryor, of course, gave him the advice um, Are you making money? Are you yes. um, doing well? Uh, then you tell, <laughs> you tell, so you tell Bill, suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and, 
to me, that's one of the funny things about comedy is that there will always be people. Lenny Bruce is the name. Lenny Bruce. Um, yeah. Sorry. There will always be people who think that they're experts and need to go out there. And I want to be clear with people when we do this podcast, this is all about our opinions. This is how we yeah, feel about people. Yeah. We're having fun with this. By no means are we saying, oh, we're experts. This guy sucks. This guy sucks. Mm. It's all interpretation. Comedy is no different than art. It makes you feel how it feels. Dave and I can listen to the same comedian. It doesn't mean that we're both going to laugh our asses off. One of my favorite comedians is Stephen Wright. Mm -hmm. Not everybody gets Stephen Wright because he's so stoic and straight. And not everybody gets the comedy. And that's, to me, that's like the pinpoint that I can show when it comes to opinion and how comedy can make you feel. Because I've seen people who watch him and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's great. Actually, I, like Steve Wright. I went yeah. with you to see Stephen Wright. Actually, yeah, to, yeah. yeah. To me, uh, he's like doing hand, joke grenades. He's pulling the pin, and then eventually it hits you, and you're like, "Oh shit, that's yeah. what he meant." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, you talked about SNL before. Uh, Prior uh, was on SNL before Murphy. Um, yeah. He did a lot of stuff on there too. And Carlin like, Prior, yeah. And uh, the time period, it, it, so you're following like all these legendary comedians too. So it was a, you know, you had to be great to be on SNL at that time. Not to say well, you don't now. But, well, yeah, but especially in that time period. In that there, time period, yeah. It, it is, it is so different now compared to then. Um, oh. and, I, uh, and, and I hate to sound like an old timer. It was like in my day, it was this much better. <laughs> but, but that's not even our day. No, that's before, uh, that, that's before <laughs> our day. Mm -hmm. and, and George Carlin would do the hippy dippy weatherman, yes. where he would come out and um, basically make fun of meteorologists, talking about how oh it's going to be hot today, cold tomorrow. Oh, December's coming up. I think there might be a cold front coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of good stuff there. Well, folks, you hear the dogs in the background. I <laughs> think that's our cue. Uh, so we're not going to pick a winner on this. This isn't what this is about. We're just talking about some of our favorite comedians. And, uh, hey, get out there. Listen to some Don Rickles. Listen to some Eddie Murphy. Uh, they're both completely different style comedians. Is why we didn't even take a vote for this. Completely different time periods. But they both were really good at their craft. Anything guys, you want to add? Yeah, at the end of the day, guys, the most important thing right now, especially with everything going on in the world, is to be able to share and enjoy a little laughter together. And that's why we do what we do is to just kind of bring comedy to the masses. So please get out there, go check out Don Rickles, check out Eddie Murphy, check out all these comedians that maybe you haven't heard before and support your local comedy too. When it's safe to go to the clubs, get out there and check out some of your local guys. Absolutely. All right. Working fans podcast, comedy cast. We're out. <laughs>